Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Light Movement Show. So this is episode two of season three. Uh, and in this episode, we're going to be talking to you guys about making way for the new. Uh, so we're super excited for this topic. I think that's really important uh, for all artists to, you know, take time to declutter their lives and sort of get rid of excess that's not necessary in order for you um, to really live your best life and for you to exceed and um, excel in everything that you do. So if you missed last uh, last week's episode, uh, we talked all about breakthrough for artists and how to have a breakthrough. Ellie and Demetra both shared some really inspiring stories. Uh, so if you haven't seen that yet, uh, go and check that out after this live um, and after this video. Um, I think it's really worth a watch because it's really inspiring uh, hearing about their stories. So um, later on in this episode, about 30 minutes of the way through it, we're going to be doing an art critique as we will be every single week. Uh, so I'm super excited for that. We have three paintings that we've chosen from our audience using uh, the hashtag artist, is it art breakthrough or artist breakthrough? Art breakthrough art 2021. <laughs> art breakthrough 2021. Art breakthrough 2021. So, um, you know, as always, we're going to be choosing paintings from that uh, hashtag. So use the hashtag. Once again, it's Art Breakthrough 2021 if you want to be featured in one of these podcasts and have your paintings critiqued. So stay tuned uh, to see if your painting that you submitted last week is going to be critiqued later. Uh, and we can't wait to get to the critiques. And at the end of this podcast too, we're going to be doing um, we're going to be doing some Q and A's for you guys. So if you have any questions, leave them in the chat. I'll pull them up on my phone at the end of this and we will answer your guys' questions. So let's get to today's topic. <laughs> uh, I am super excited about this. Um, and I know both of you guys are. I think decluttering is really essential. Um, mm -hmm. And we're kind of at a perfect time right now um, in all of our lives and in our business and um, just the whole kind of spiritual climate that we're living in. Mm -hmm. It's a good time for decluttering. So, um, when do or how let's start with the first question is how do you identify things that need to be cut like fat or excess or clutter that needs to be cut from your life? Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> well, for me, what happens is I start to feel overwhelmed and uh, like I have too many plates spinning too much on my plate. There's too much going on. I can't manage it all. Um, I start to feel like, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm not, um, not, not good enough, but not, uh, efficient enough or too disorganized. Mm. Um, <laughs> you know, I get this urge to like put things in order and organize some things and, you know, take a moment. And actually it happened to me just this week. I was, I had, uh, a, one of those weeks where you feel like you're kind of swimming through concrete to get things done. Mm -hmm. And I felt really overwhelmed, super inefficient. Uh, everything I wanted to do wasn't happening. I wasn't able to uh, check off my to-do list, the things I wanted to do because I was stopped by clutter and disorganization. And so usually for me anyway, that's the first indication that I got to like take a hard look. And so it was uh, just one thing led to another. I have an older phone and computer and I, mm, I mean, good example. they're not that old, <laughs> you know, for me, they're super old. old iPhone 11 X or iPhone 11 Pro <laughs> well, Max. Well, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the new one to come out, but I, anyway, it has like 16,000 pictures, photos on it. It's got a huge mess. I mean, the documents, the, the apps, it's out of control it was completely out of control and it was glitching because I had like two megabytes of storage left. So I, and my computer was in the same, um, and, and I watch for things like that because to me, it's an indication of what's happening on the inside. Mm -hmm. Our outside world is a reflection of our inside world. And so it's like plate is too full. There's way too much garbage on there. I haven't cleaned up in a while. I need to deal with some things, mm -hmm. you know, I need to take time to like assess. So, I didn't accomplish everything I set out to do uh, this week, but I made huge strides in clearing my computer and, um, you know, cleaning up my computer and my phone. And while I was doing that, because I was going back through memories, through, you know, old photos, old documents, old things, I it, it also was sort of highlighting old things in me or feelings I had when I looked at those pictures or those um, videos or different, you know, things that 
I lived through a couple of years ago, you know, and it, and so it made me like go deep in myself and mm. think about things. And so I, I like experienced it this week. That's like, so whole, funny. Yeah, I did yeah, that's the crazy. same thing. You like, did? I did really? the same thing. Yeah. I think it's in the air. I <laughs> honestly do. I think there's a collective, um, a, like Jung called it a collective subconscious. I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's a collective spirit. It's like, yeah. I mean, I, honestly, in my heart, I just think that we're all children of God. And so we're all brothers and sisters. And so we have like the same sort of connection mm -hmm. somehow, but, um, or, or spiritual connection. And so if you're kind of living sensitive to that, I think we all collectively experience the similar things together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I definitely had an urge and it hasn't gone away. Like I'm, I'm a little bit on a rampage now and I'm like, uh, but I gotta be careful cause I really need to get to work and like accomplish <laughs> some things and not just like yeah. go through a, a spazzing of decluttering. Well, at what point then do you decide like, all right, like what I'm doing is going to help me long term versus like, all right, I got to keep up with yeah, the short term stuff. Yeah, you're avoiding. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Normally, I if I falter, it's just a little bit for a little while mm -hmm. because I'm so motivated to get things done. So I might lose a day or two, but I, I'm not super worried about it because I'm I I don't enjoy cleaning and decluttering and you know. Yeah. But. I was I was finishing up my computer stuff today just before the podcast and then I started looking at my my studio that's right there and you know at my studio down here but my studio up there and I'm like there's a lot of stuff over there I need to <laughs> organize that and, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was looking at my sketchbooks and I'm like how many sketchbooks does a person need really I should label those I should I should organize those because I have one sketchbook that's for like no sources just stuff out of your head and then I have like another sketchbook that's like really planny planny. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have like three sketchbooks that I'm kind of using. And then there's old versions of those that are still lingering. And then anyway, I don't know. It's like you can't get rid of them. You just want to <laughs> hang on to them. Well, yeah, because I mean, you never know when you'll, you know, want those for like a video or want those to like share with other people or, yeah. you know, I mean, it's especially tough in your guys' positions because like you guys, I mean, I don't know if I can say this, but you just did a video where you brought up all of your worst paintings from yeah. the past. And, you know, if you would have normally people want to get rid of that stuff. Yeah. I, I was you just, can't really, because. I was just <laughs> looking at a 10 year old sketchbook and you were, you were doing the same thing this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was looking we at a 10 year We did find all those. So I guess that's part yeah, of it. Yeah. Maybe that's part of it. They're but all covered in dust. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, and that's what started it is, is looking for that book to make that video mm. got me digging in all <laughs> The piles clutter. of clutter that are hidden in different closets or, you know, storage spaces. Mm. And I couldn't find it, but I found all kinds of other things. And yeah, so it it, it was like a, a chain of yeah. events. I and, think, oh, sorry. Yeah. And then simultaneously, both my computer and my phone were glitching because they were out of memory. So it was just time. So, yeah. so sometimes you just have all these external things that tell you it's like ding, 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 time to declutter. Time <laughs> to declutter. Yeah. Make way for the new. Yeah. <laughs> It's a perfect time too. So yeah. What were you going to say? Well, I mean, I don't know that I'm going through that necessarily right now, but I feel like after um, like a change of scenery, this, this sort of stuff is like illuminated. And I felt like after we came back from Greece, totally. I was looking at my studio and I just wanted to make it bigger. It felt so tiny and restrictive to me. Mm -hmm. And so I, I decluttered at that point. And so that was a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And since then, I feel like I've been super productive and um, I'm able to have more space and, you know, just be more productive in my studio. And so I think for me that that happened like in the physical a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I totally agree with all the things you're saying. And I think when you want to have a change in your life, you have to recognize, like you have to make the changes in your habits to create that change. It's not just going to happen one day, like out of the blue, you have to create good habits and um, just, I don't know, like recently we got this journal called um, the five minute journal and Jake and I have been doing it every morning and night and it's so amazing because like the things I'm writing in the journal, it asks you like three things that would make your day great. So you're basically oh, prophesying cool. to yourself so cool. you the things really 
that you want to happen, like have happen that day. And when you I write post them a link to it or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people have already bought it. Just she posted <laughs> it on her story. Just a picture of her holding mine before she even got hers. I was just reading it. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. But it, it was really cool because like the things that we, that I've been writing, like literally start coming true. And um, that's cool. It's, it's like very mini cool. power statements. It yeah. Is. No, and they cool. actually tell you to write a daily affirmation every day, a new one. So you have to say like, I am this. Yeah. And that's really um, cool. It's decluttering your mind. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a good point. Decluttering your mind. Cause it's like a lot of times you just think like, Oh, like you're physical. But like you said before, it's like you're the physical surroundings that you have are sort of representation of what's going on in your mind and, mm -hmm. and in your spirit too. So it's like yeah. good to, um, declutter that. So let's talk about some things that maybe people might not think are cluttering their mind or their spirit that are like mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm thinking of is unforgiveness. Like if you mm -hmm. hold unforgiveness for people, then it kind of stunts your own, you know, um, yeah. yeah. Spiritual progress. So totally. Definitely. Yeah. I was dealing with that this week too. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, the things we were saying, like there's there's physical things and then spiritual things inside of us, but they're basically kind of the same. And it's weird how that works. But just even having like a messy room, a messy closet, messy closet. dirty mm. kitchen, all that stuff is literal clutter in your house. But it also like it affects your mood throughout the entire day. When we have a clean house, like the cleaning ladies come and it's just spotless. Yeah. I have like I feel just like limitless. Like there's yeah. just this really good feeling. <laughs> And so I don't know. That's something I'm, I'm like realizing. I think too, like um, there's a, all those things are symbolic and you, you can sort of pay attention to them. And um, usually where clutter happens or mess or, or dirt is like, um, you know, a, like a closet and closet is like the things that are hidden, mm -hmm. you know, the things that most people don't see. Most people, we don't go in each other's closets. Our closet is sort of a private, yeah. a hidden place. Uh, and, and you know, a kitchen, you know, is symbolic of like your heart or like the center of everything. It's where the food comes from. It's, it's really like that nourishing part. So if your kitchen is constantly, you know, dirty or cluttered or, you know, I, that, that that's, could symbolize, you know, something to look at. Um, I know uh, somebody I'm close to has an issue with junk drawers and <laughs> and turns every single drawer anywhere near them into a junk drawer. And so there's this transformative thing that happens where a perfectly organized drawer suddenly is not, and it's a mm. junk drawer and all, all things get mixed together. There's no like um, categorizing of utilities. Like this is for this purpose and that is for that purpose. And, you know, that person definitely has that issue in their life where they, they don't prioritize. Mm. There's a lack of prioritization of, you mm, know, that's of good. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that like wherever your issues are, you know, um, then they just know, manifest in the natural. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's all kind of symbolic, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, a, you know, a, a dirty backyard, dirty, cluttered backyard, you know, um, that usually your backyard is like something in your past, you know? So if you have like a wild, overgrown, unkempt backyard, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, that you haven't, you know, dealt with in a while, then maybe there's things in your past you haven't dealt with, or, mm, you yeah. know, just as, yeah. What do you think overgrown trails are? Same? I think it means your ATV's broken and you don't have a horse to ride. And <laughs> so when you get horses, we're fixing the problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think just even just making that switch in your mindset to understand that it's almost like paintings, like everything in your paintings is symbolic, but not, and, and it makes me think of one of the podcasts from season two, I can't remember which one it was, but we talked about how just being an artist in every aspect of your life. Yeah. And it, this, I feel like this just goes right into that. Definitely. It's like, you know, what we're talking about with uh, identifying what's happening in the physical and connecting it to the spiritual and your, you know, what's going on in your mind. I think that's really important mm -hmm. um, for all artists and really everyone, you know, not even just artists and, you know, we're all artists. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 
Okay, so making way for the new, bringing it back to the topic. So once you've decluttered, you know, what are some things that you can do to stay decluttered? Okay, well, before you go there, okay. I think you said something when you were talking about this podcast that I think is really important that we should talk about. And you said trim the fat. Mm -hmm. And I think trimming the fat is slightly different than decluttering. Okay. And I think that another thing that goes hand in hand with it is if you're feeling either overwhelmed and, you know, kind of disorganized and, and like a ch change needs to happen or you feel stuck. Yeah. Like you just can't move forward. You want to, you try to, you do everything you know or to do. Or you're slowed down. You're even. slowed down. Yeah. 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 Um, I think that's an indication that you need to trim the fat mm -hmm. and, um, and that, I think that is things that are excess, things that are unnecessary. And, and it could just be for a season. And those are usually things that, you know, people are more defensive about and less inclined to trim. Yeah. And um, it could it's be indulgences. Yeah. It's indulgences. It could be, you know, partying too much. It could be um, uh, video games, video games. It could be TV, it literally could be food. movies. Yeah. It could be maybe food. it's jobs that you have that you really, you know, hate and they're like bringing you down, you know, like, oh. I think it could be responsibilities, oh, responsibilities too, like saying obligation, obligation like saying yeah. no to things. And, and I mean, maybe it is in their job, like, mm -hmm. Yeah, just kind of saying yes too much to yeah. people and not, you know, prioritizing and mm -hmm. uh, um, being the rescuer. There's a lot of people that that in order to feel necessary, uh, they have to be the rescuer. And so and they're, they're, they just constantly live in crisis in their life and, and everybody needs them for something. And they're the first person to go help and rescue. Um, but it's a it's an avoidance. It's a way to, to uh, it'll, it'll hold you stuck in moving forward in your destiny uh, because it's kind of like, you know, a deflection of, of energy. And so not to say don't help people, you know, but if you're, if it's a pattern where it actually stops you and you're unable to move forward because you're everybody's rescuer. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think there's lots of things yeah, like that. It could be anything. I mean, it could even be Bunko. I was like, wait, what's Is Bunko? That a game? Oh, that's right. <laughs> bunko night. Oh, you know? I don't know. <laughs> like bingo night, but Bunko no. night. I don't know. Mm. I've never played that either. <laughs> it's, it's it's a joke. Yeah. Old age joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry if I just offended anyone. <laughs> there could be some serious Bunko fans out there, Jake, who are offended right now. It's true. Um, I've never played Bunko. I've only I haven't heard either, of it but in I context have friends, of I have friends that go, things. the reason I know this is I have, I, I know people who have a bunco night and everybody who does have a bunco night that I have personally met, they complain about it and they don't like bunco night and they don't like bunco and they don't want to go, but they feel compelled and obligated to go because it's just like once Social. a week, the ladies get together and do something and they feel like they're letting them down if they don't go, but they, they don't enjoy it. They don't want to go. So that's why I said it because it's, it's crazy how that happens, but I've never known a single person that goes to Bunko night. That's like Bunko is like it. It's so fun. And I just enjoy it. And I can't wait for next week. They're always like, I got Bunko night. The name is so silly. I know. Like, <laughs> I don't know what it's like. I've never been to a Bunko night, but I just know people that go and complain about it. And mm -hmm. so that's why I said it. And to me, it's, it, it symbolizes that those like obligations, those social obligations mm -hmm. that, end up ruling your life sometimes and it's like trim the fat just mm -hmm. you know yeah get rid of it like what's the worst that could happen if you do you people know people get upset with you for one week and then they're over it mm -hmm. and then if they see you actually doing something with your time you know like yeah. if you have a legit and you explain yeah and you're like i have some goals i'm super serious about my goals and so i am cutting out a few things from my schedule because i'm really serious about it and i'm going for it and so i'll see you around that you was know? monopoly for me last night i want to stick around play monopoly cards yeah. but sorry john yeah like bunko night yeah mm -hmm. Okay, well, that was a good podcast. Thank you guys. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, I just do need to check the time so that I'm aware. Okay, it is. We got, we're 20 minutes in. We're good. We're doing good on time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>
So in about 10 minutes from now, we are going to be critiquing uh, the three pieces uh, that were submitted via the hashtag. So stay tuned for that, guys. Um, we're going to continue talking about this awesome subject, though. <laughs> um, okay, so why is it do you think that people like bring on excess things? Because if we can mm -hmm. identify the why, then I think that that's a good way to stop it for people in the future, you know, and for ourselves, really, because that's what these podcasts are about. It's about, you know, mm -hmm. helping people and helping yeah. ourselves at the same time. We're just thinking out loud. We don't plan any of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally comes in the moment. Um, so what do you guys think? <laughs> hmm. Can you just say the question one more yeah, time? Yeah, so why do you think people take on excess oh, yeah, obligations yeah. Okay. or excess in general? Like what are they, they're trying to fill something in themselves or? Yeah, I mean, I think that could be part of it. Um, and yeah, it's kind of like what you're saying, like they feel like before you're talking about a rescuer um, or they want to be like included all the time. They don't want to be left out. Mm -hmm. Like some people struggle with that. Um I don't know. Like, I think there's so many different personalities and different type of people where like maybe they want to feel important or they want to feel like necessary. And so they, they say yes to a lot of people. I think it's also really, um, uh, Okay. So like, you know, the three of us, we've sort of been in a flow for a while. Um, so it's harder maybe to relate to, but there's a lot of people that are transitioning like into being a full-time artist or into mm -hmm. being a serious art. It's sort of new for them. This isn't, this isn't something they've been doing for years and years and years. And they've made a recent decision to, to get serious about it. Um, or, or maybe, you know, you're in one of our programs like the mastery program and, and you, you, but you still struggle with doing the assignments and doing it on time and keeping the pace. And there's other um, things kind of coming, you know, in the way. Uh, and, and then you just say, oh, I don't have time, right? Mm, and, yeah. and so, so many people say, I don't have time. And, and that, I don't, I, it, it almost doesn't matter what your life is. I'm gonna say at least 99% of the time, it's not true. Mm -hmm. um, and I can, I can say that from experience. I've had four little kids, I've had, you know, two or three full-time jobs. I've ran multiple businesses. I've lived in teeny tiny apartments. I've like, whatever the obstacle is, I think I've lived through it at some point. And I was determined to, to make the time. Um, and so we, we all have enough time, but you have to be very uh, discriminating about what you fill your time with and honest mm -hmm. and be willing to cut it out. And I think a lot of people, especially if they're making a new shift, it's so precious to them. Their dream is so precious and so um, important. They, they almost don't want to be in a position to find out if they can do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so that's it's really like, good. that's a huge, it's one. like yeah. this avoidance. Like I'm going to fill my schedule with all this stuff and then have the excuse that I don't have time. Of course I want to be a professional artist, but right now I just don't have time. It's the word busy. It's yeah. Just like I'm too busy. I have too much going on. Well, you know, I have a full-time job and two children. You know, and it's it's like you still have the time. I, I full time is only forty hours. That's right. That's only forty hours. You know, so you there's 168 hours in the week, and you know if you divide it up, you have time for three full time jobs, and you can still eat and sleep and still have 20 hours left over. So I've calculated it. Maybe out. two full time, because three would be 120 hours, and and then eat and sleep and. Yeah, but you only need uh, less than 40 hours to sleep. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I've calculated it out. You six hours, or that would be less than six hours of sleep a night. But, anyways, the for hard, remains. for hardcore people. <laughs> if you're okay, really hardcore. I'm just saying you. There is enough time if yeah. you really want to, especially in short spurts. But I think that people, that's a go-to excuse. I don't have time because they're and they and they consciously fill their schedule with lots and lots and lots of things that they think are more important than their dream mm -hmm. um, because number one, they think it's selfish to dream. And number two, they think, well, if I actually applied everything I had to my dream, what if I find out I'm no good? What if I find out that I'm going to fail? And then this precious dream I've held in my heart my whole life, I, I find out I can't actually live it out. It's better to just have it sort of there in hopes to one day maybe do it mm -hmm. than to like find out you I gave it my all and I'm just, 
no good and I can't do it. Yeah. You know, and so I, I don't think that would happen to anybody. Anybody who puts their whole heart yeah, into something it's a lie. and perseveres it's... and pushes through, you will achieve it. Mm -hmm. You will achieve it. It might take you, you know, a little longer than you thought, or you might hit some obstacles or roadblocks, but you will achieve it if you if you really persevere and put your whole heart into it. I'm I'm proof of that. You know, we just did that video of, you know, all my ugly artwork. And, you know, if you saw that artwork, you wouldn't think like I could make it, mm -hmm. you know, and they and still sold <laughs> somehow. <laughs> and so I, I just kept working at it and persevering. And um, so I would say if that's if this resonates with you and you feel like maybe you fill your schedule with lots of small things constantly and then you, you've made up your mind that you're too busy and you don't have time for your dream, uh, really think about that because it's probably not true. And there's some things you can cut out and just think what is more important than your dream? You know, what is really more important than that? There's, there's very few things that are more important than that. That's, that's near the top of the list for sure for most people, or at least it should be mm -hmm. because if you fulfill your dreams or you pursue your dreams, you're going to be a better parent. You're going to be a better friend, a better wife or, or husband. You're, you're going to be a better person if you pursue your dreams and you run after it. So everything else in your life will align and line up if you are living a purposeful life. That's, that's very your true. true calling and destiny. Yeah. And so like you, you can't, you can't. You yeah. just can't afford to make yourself busy, like make yourself unbusy, get mm -hmm. rid of all of it. Make just yourself busy in art. Make yourself busy in art. That's right. And um, the cool thing is once you, you know, really follow your dreams and what you're supposed to do, then you inspire other people. That's right. And then everyone else believes that they can do it. And so it's, it's, you're being an example for other people. That's how we change the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Imagine if everybody in the world, Everybody, all was it nine billion now? When I was in college, it was seven billion. It's, I think it's eight billion. Eight or it's billion. like seven point eight. Okay, so it hasn't grown that much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, college was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> they uh, out of out of seven billion, eight billion people across the planet. What if every last person lived and pursued their dreams and their destiny? Every single person. What would the world be like? Amazing. It would be heaven. It would be heaven. It would mm -hmm. we wouldn't, there would be no more. Yeah. It, 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 it would literally transform into heaven and imagine the inventions, imagine, you know, the innovations and the kind of life we would have. There wouldn't be a need for like these small little jobs, you know, like there wouldn't be like when you think about fast food restaurants or you're thinking like who would be the people to work here or do this, fast food but everything exist. would, yeah, yeah, the whole McDonald's system would go out of business. Guys. Let's put McDonald's different. out of business. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, the whole world system would be different if right. everyone really truly lived out what they're meant to do. Yeah. I mean, it would, it would be heaven. So. Yeah. And they would all like, I don't know if we're on the topic anymore. But. It's okay. We're making way for the new. The new is coming. That's, yeah. That's it. You yeah. know, that's what better new than heaven. Yeah. You know? Right. Well, I think one of the things that you mentioned, just like, well, one of the things that I thought of when you were talking is just having this mindset switch of like, like a full-time job is nine to five. And then, you know, you're done after that. Like, I think using your time wisely too, in like, not lying to yourself and telling yourself that you can't work after that time or you're too tired or whatever. You know, I think those are all lies. Like you can work until I work until 11 PM most nights <laughs> and you can do it. It's so easy. Honestly, if you're doing what you love, then, you know, it's, you shouldn't be hard to stay up late. You know, it shouldn't be hard to work from 8 AM until 11. You know, that's, that's a long time. That's way more time. And if you're working those long hours, you will achieve your dreams so much quicker than you would if you are only spending 40 hours a week on it. Yeah. Um, oh, there was something else that you said, Demetra, that made me think of something. Ah, oh, trying to keep track of it. I can't remember. Well, it'll come back. <laughs> I think what you said is really important. It's, it's really good to craft your life where, uh, you, you don't work. Yeah. You know, like, uh, so I, th I think it's a really good, healthy thing to live your life where whatever box there is, 
It could be a society box, a culture box, an upbringing box, your own box, whatever. All those boxes, um, I think, should be challenged and questioned. And why do we believe that there's a 40-hour work week? That's a box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a dumb box. Like, why do we even believe that? Literally a square, 40 hours, four sides, 10 hours each side. It's true. (laughs) But it's like, what it does is it makes your expectations or a ceiling and it makes you feel like there's something wrong with you. I should be tired as soon as I hit 42 hours. Or so, man, I worked 50 hours. What am I doing? I must be crazy. I'm I'm working so hard. I'm probably a workaholic. It's like... (laughs) Or even the idea, go to work. I go to work. What is go to work? Like, that's a box. Why do we go to work? No, we live life. Uh We live life. And you just, you live your life. You pursue your dream. You live out your dream. and, 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 of course, there's a road and there's a path. And so you have to pay your dues. And there is times where you don't always do everything that you want to do, but it's this constant pruning and trimming and trimming the fat and getting rid of to make your best life to make your Mm -hmm. best life. And we should all be at least on our way or towards that Mm -hmm. and not settle for, you know, uh, a nine to five, 40 hour work week that we hate. Life is way too short and way too precious for that. You should enjoy what you do and look forward to it. And, um, and yeah, and, and, and challenge all those boxes. Totally. Well, um, I think it is time for us to critique some art. Okay. We have, okay. oh man, my computer went to sleep over there, but I remember which pieces it was. So uh, first we are going to be doing, um, if we could cue up the still of the art, we're gonna be doing a neat, painting first it's the one with the girl and holding the butterfly um so who wants to critique that one first and we have around 10 15 minutes to critique these so plenty of time yeah okay um is it up yeah Yeah. okay i think this is a really interesting painting um like the mood of it is very strong um and the perspective it's it's really cool i like how her face is, I mean, it's very stylized. It's like a very specific style. And I think mm-hmm. she did that really good. well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like this is a really good painting. Maybe the only thing I would say to maybe add something would be her arm looks a little bit thin. I totally agree. So maybe like add some, it could be abstract skin tone, brush strokes somewhere in the black, like just so that it feels like maybe there's more of her that we're just not seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And like the back shoulder. Uh, yeah. How there's like kind of, it's like a kind of chunks missing mm-hmm. or something. That's, that's good. Like she could add more skin yeah. in the black. Yeah. Or even like a black on black on the other side. So like the left side, um, just a hint of a another shoulder, shoulder. Mm-hmm. by putting like a real dark there, but, but so that you yeah. can, it's not just flat black. Um, also, I think that the white highlights are way too like strong, and so especially on the chin. Yeah, especially on the chin and the lips, the yeah. nose. Yeah. It it shouldn't be like white, like right out of the tube kind of white. It should, you know, maybe be pinker on the lips and the nose. It would be more skin tone. So I think just mellowing out some of those highlights and and the, and having more transitions. And maybe more skin ties are, you know, she did a really good job on the eyes. Yep. And I like all the like kind of drippy line work. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. And the style of it is is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I wish that there was almost even more of the drippy line. Yeah, things. maybe. Yeah. It, Blue or it's, something. it's sort of like uh, something that you notice after looking well, at it. Well, and the drips could stop where it hits the shoulder. And that's how you could see that a shoulder is there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 And then other than what you guys are saying, I'm just wishing there was a little bit more detail in the butterflies and um, yeah, like you said, variety in the, in the background. So it's not kind of just this and that. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah. Great job. Maybe even some smaller butterflies in the background that are faded and further back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it could use more depth. It definitely has a this and that feel. And so in the black, there could be more depth or this feeling Mm -hmm. that, things go back. I like her signature though. 
So the next one is mantra for design. This, the horizontal. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I think this um, painting is really beautiful, um, really soft, ethereal, good elegant. Composition. Yeah, good composition. Um, the color's really bright. I mean, I think this painting could be done, but if we're just going to, like, you know, add stuff, like anything, <laughs> you know, just to make it better, um, I would say with the hair, I would like to see it even more wild, like maybe have it go off the canvas um, and, and maybe the top part where the yellow, like her hair meets the blue, I would soften that and kind of blur it more so we don't know where it, you know, starts or ends because um, it feels a little bit like a bubble. Um, I don't know. I think it's maybe the koi fish could have a little bit more detail just to stand out more since they're in the foreground. I think to me, it's um, really, really nice, really well done, good, good color story yep. of, you know, dominant blue with some orange. But I, to me, it doesn't look finished. It looks like it's, you know, 70% done or 60% done. And I, like, it, it looks like it needs thicker paint. Uh, not everywhere, but but here and there. Like I think the neck is done, but on the face, I would like to see a little more paint and variety of color and more variety of color in the hair and thicker paint where it's forward and and like the bangs are there and mm. a brushstroke that indicates the form of the hair. Um, and then I think some you know thicker paint on anything that's close to us. So it can be thin, like where the tail disappears into the hair, leave that alone, but up close on the head, you know, thicker brush strokes, and, um, and then maybe even some like abstract dots or brush strokes that go off uh, that indicate like, sort of like maybe there's more koi fish underneath there. So it doesn't just have like the two and then it ends abruptly. It, de it definitely needs this feeling of things going off the edge on mm -hmm. that that side by the ko the koi fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think with the hair, uh, there could be some like more wispy because right now mm -hmm. it just feels like kind of chunks of hair rather than yeah. like flowing hair. So if there were like some wisps of the hair, um, like Esther said, wispy, wispy, wispy. <laughs> 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 uh, that's in season two of Outstanding Artists if you want to see it. <laughs> Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Um, also, fun fact, sorry to interrupt myself, um, but we actually um, paused filming an episode to do this live podcast for yeah. you guys. So yeah. uh, we are literally in the middle of filming mm -hmm. um, They're halfway episode through. six uh, of the Outstanding Artists. So, um, but anyways, back to what I was saying, I think that some highlights on the hair too would be good. Um, just so, but I think that she did fantastic with the darks and I do like the dry brushing that she did with the hair, uh, particularly where like the hair kind of meets the forehead. Um, and in that area, I think it looks really good. Mm -hmm. Um, overall, I agree with both of what you guys are saying. I think it's a really sellable piece. Um, mm -hmm. and it just looks really good. So, mm -hmm. um, great color story, like you said, Ellie. So good job mantra for design. <laughs> <laughs> So next, we're going to talk about Talia Johnston's art. Tanya. Um, oh, Tanya. Sorry. <laughs> Is that Tanya who came with us to uh, yeah to Greece? Oh yeah, my gosh, that's so cool. I I think it is. Yeah. So that's her last, awesome. Her last name's Johnston. I think so. Cool. That's a fun surprise. <laughs> um, I I really like this painting. It's so quirky, and the color is really interesting. Yeah. Um, like a really cool color combo. And the Definitely. black, the black grounds it. Like if the black wasn't there, I think it would yeah. be too, too pastel-y. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, to make it just stronger, I would say maybe the face could use a little more work. Like I would just beautify her eyes a little bit more. One of her eyes looks a little bit like maybe it's sunken in. Just maybe it's with warms and cools. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, the lips too. Yeah. Like I would just, I don't know, soften some of the edges, add some stronger highlights, maybe add some like peach to the cheeks um, and her lips too. Um, and one of the the eyebrows, it, it feels like it should be a little bit, there darker. should be a little bit more darks yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah, um, just cause Almost it, like a missing eyebrow. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. It feels like it was like a shaved eyebrow. Unless she's doing that on purpose. Yeah, but. maybe it was a shaved eyebrow. <laughs> yeah, I think the black, um, 
the black and the fish and the face and all that, that kind of graphic poster. So cool. Yeah. Is really cool. A really great, um, style thing. I would like to see the black go off though. Like if there was like, uh, two more fish. So like maybe yeah, five maybe, fish. Maybe a few more fish. I think. And yeah. And if the black kind of carried throughout from border to border. Um, and then I think on the lower part of the jacket, putting some like light, really light highlights. Yeah. Um, so that, or, or a shift of color or something to kind of bring us in, It'll like pull us in mm -hmm. compositionally in better form too, I think. Yeah. But I think like for the most part, the figure looks, you know, done and, and nice. And, and the background that, that like very strange moody mm -hmm. color, like the whole style of it is very unique and mm -hmm. just really striking. Um, and I think it could go from like a really striking, interesting, cool painting to like, Whoa, that is like an amazing painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If, if you, if she, um, you know, added a couple more fish, so the black carried throughout and then, um, uh, and then like a few more white highlights on the jacket. And then, like you said, fixing the face and then it's going to be like an outstanding. Yeah. Amazing I wonder if, if she did this technique with the radiance underpainting oh maybe and maybe she's like half she's thinking she's halfway through or something i, I have no know. idea you say that, but if you like do could be, but. but don't don't change it <laughs> <laughs> well she's i think she's in portfolio but she's been like uh trying to find her trying style. to find like process not not like all over the place she's sort of boinging a little bit within a uh, yeah so uh with definitely like surrealism and um, and symbolic kind of figurative edginess edgy, but I think she's a little bit, um, seeking, you know, stylistically what to do. So I could imagine if, if she liked this, Tanya, if you really like, um, doing this, you know, uh, do a whole series of it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it could be, it could be really, really cool. Yeah. I totally and it, agree. it has this like fine art, comic book, epic, Graphic, graphic novel edgy, feel to it, but yeah. in a real like fine art way, mm -hmm. like not, not decor, not, um, you know what I mean? It could also be, she could be going in the direction of narrative too. Yeah. 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 That would be cool. So anyway, I think you're on the, on the brink of breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when you zoom in, there's such good details, like on the pants too. Yeah. Like it's amazing. All the details and like the folds and, everything. Um, one thing that I did notice that was a little bit distracting on the clothes is that little dark spot yeah, right where I the nipple say, would be. It looks like, nipple looks like a nipple, especially yeah. from far away. Like when I looked at like the thumbnail <laughs> of the picture, I was like, oh, is yeah. she naked? And then it's, yeah. oh no, it's closed. So I would just, honestly, <laughs> I would just cover that up. And even if it's on the source, like I think yeah. it'll look better if, cause it, it's a little distracting right now. Yeah, um, I didn't even notice till you said it. Really? I, kept, I noticed it, and then <laughs> yeah. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you didn't have to say it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I totally agree. I would love to see more fish, too. I think that would be super cool, um, and it's a really amazing piece. Um, one thing that I noticed is, like you told me the other day, Ellie, is just watch out for edges, you know, mm -hmm. that's one of the final things that will really take this to another level too, is, you know, just fine tuning all the edges. I think yeah. on the right side of her, you did a great job with the edges. Um, but maybe with the fish, there's some parts of the edges that could be a little bit more blurry um, to make it look less like posted onto the painting, but um, it's really cool. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that critique. I hope it was helpful for you guys with your own art. Um, if it was, let us know in the comments, you know, let us know um, anything maybe that you would like to see or hear about in the next podcast yeah. episode, uh, show episode. <laughs> um, and uh, so now we're going to transition into going into a Q&A. So I got to pull that up on my phone. Um, but like I said before, I'm just going to mention it one more time, just in case anyone hasn't heard. Uh, if you want to have your art critiqued, you know, tag us on, on Instagram. You got to post your painting to Instagram and use the hashtag um, art breakthrough 2021 and just tag us on uh, art club, tag us on uh, Milan art Institute uh, and we will check out your guys' paintings. So uh, that's how we can see it. Okay. Let me go find this link real quick. 
Um, in the meantime, what is something cool that you guys are up to today? What are you guys excited about? Today? <laughs> yeah. I, I want to say something. Yeah. Uh, what I'm super excited about, um, cause I've been working on it a lot, um, the last few days is, um, the, uh, breakthrough journal. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so and cool. it is going to be ready Monday. So we're sending it off Monday to be printed. Um, so we, what we've created, Dimitra and I have created, uh, this, um, breakthrough journal. So it basically is like a journal slash workbook slash sketchbook um, with all these prompts and activities and things to do inside of it to promote breakthrough or help you get unstuck um, or help you, you know, overcome obstacles. And uh, we had a ton of fun. It just flowed. It just came like really easily. And uh, we had a ton of fun making it. It's really stunning and beautiful mm -hmm. to look at. Each page is designed like really, really nice. Um, uh, Heather Bailey, uh, one of our coaches, who's also a designer and artist, she designed the pages to it and she did an amazing job. I like, after I saw it, I was like, this could be like in Barnes and Nobles for sure. Wow. Selling for $40. I mean, like it, it is, is super, super cool. Well, maybe it could be. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anybody who signs up for the conference, even online or on site, um, we'll send you the, the digital ebook of the work workbook. So you can either print it, um, and, and, you know, on the pages and just like work, work through it on the pages, or you can just read it on your computer and then in your own sketchbook, work on it. Um, uh, and then the people who come in person to the conference, um, they'll have an actual printed uh, book. I have a question. If yeah. people who signed up, they're going to join online and they mm -hmm. want to buy, like if they get the one online, but it, what if they want to get like the, the, physical, the, the physical, physical one? Could, is, would that be available? Yeah, I think buy? that'll be available um, in our store. Can, yeah. Um, I don't have a, a price yet, but it, it won't be $40. It'll be less than that. But it it'll... $39.99. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I don't know. Probably around 20 bucks is my guess. Um, and yeah, those will be available like August, um, probably like 20th mm -hmm. or 17th. Yeah. So, um, but it's, it's, it's not like we're going to talk about it during the conference um, and utilize it, but it's, it's actually meant for so that what I don't want is for people to come to this conference, like, oh, that was great. Okay, I learned some stuff and then kind of space it out and forget all about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want them to actually carry it through all the way until next year, you know, and, and to really like have the information and the motivation and the inspiration last. Yeah, and, and come back to the next conference and tell us all about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so um, the workbook and the journal is designed for that so that you can use it all year, um, you know, and whenever you get stuck and, and it'll be tools that you can use over and over and over again. Um, I use them all the time. So do you. So um, anyway, I'm super excited about that. So the digital will be out Monday. So anybody who's already signed up for the conference, you'll be getting that in your email and, um, and anybody, you know, who signs up from here on out will also get it. Cool. I'm excited about the the workbook. Mm -hmm. That's have you really seen cool. it? Did you? Yeah, open yeah. It? I just looked at it uh, yesterday. I think it was. I haven't seen really the fi cool. final edited version. Yeah, I love it. Um, okay, so we have a couple really good questions. Well, more than a couple, but um, first from Jody Miller, she's asking, "What is the best way to make way for the new focus and steward your yes and not end up working in a vacuum?" I know there is community online, but it can still feel isolating. And she said, uh, to follow up on that, sometimes I feel like trimming the fat means to get off social media, which could mean trimming community. So any advice for that? Um, mm -hmm. Those are very good questions. I, it's tough. I, yeah, I think like uh, for every person, there's little details that are going to be individualistic. Um, and for some, cutting back on... Uh, social media is is absolutely necessary and for others you know spending more time on social media is going to be necessary so mm -hmm. it's, in the way you use it and too. the way that you use like, it i think that's really the trimming that right. needs to be done like if you're if you ever catch yourself just mindlessly scrolling yeah then i don't think you should be on it but i think you should be intentional about going on mm -hmm. social media I never agree. go on social media to fill time yeah but rather for a specific purpose i think that's 
that's good. Like if you really want to connect with people through social media, then do it. Don't ever just go on social media, like posts and then scroll. You should comment. You should engage. Yeah, it should with be people. intentional. Exactly. Um, I think also just thinking of yourself as a leader. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if, if you, if she, if you think of yourself as a leader, then when you're on social media, you'll be leading, you'll be influencing, mm -hmm. you'll be there for intention and purpose. Yeah. And it, and then it'll be valuable and it'll be, it's a tool, um, it's a tool yeah. and purposeful and it, it will, um, things either fill your destiny tank or they deplete it, you know? And so you, if, if it's filling that tank and it's fulfilling a piece of your destiny, if it's opening a way, if it's, um, pertaining to it, then it should always be a yes. If it pulls away, distracts, demotivates, like yeah. flattens your tires, you know, yeah. then, then it's no. a no and you got to cut it out. And so I think like, it's, it's really up to each individual mm -hmm. what, but that's the question you have to ask yourself. Does this bring value to my destiny? Does mm -hmm. this fuel my destiny? Does this fuel my purpose in life? Um, and my dreams, or does this pull away and deplete it? And I think another thing, like, it feels like the root of the question is like, sort of how do you not get lonely when you have your head down working all the time, mm -hmm. on, but it's not working. As we said before, it's, you know, doing life. It's focusing on what you're passionate about. It's, you know, pursuing your destiny. Um, but I think that not, but that's a wrong transition word, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Uh, what I think is that, you know, and what you guys have said before too, is that when you are walking in your destiny, the right people will come. That's very mm -hmm. true. And the right, I think the you right people it. probably are already there. They just might not be utilized or in the right way or walking in their destinies mm -hmm. to help you. So, you and know, sometimes you go through like a lean time or a time where things you feel like something's not quite right. Um, and, and you feel like things are kind of empty or not, not quite right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that could just be transition. That could just be a transitional time, yeah, exactly. especially in terms of relationships and friends, because if you are sort of shedding, um, relationships that don't, uh, bring value mutually, or good, or good you know, to either one of yeah. you or good fruit, mm -hmm. then you may go through a time where there's seemingly no relationships, but then that's just to Point exactly for the new to come so as you're waiting for the new, there might be this vacuum or this like you know place where it feels a little bit empty um somebody told me i think it's like a a, a ukrainian saying or something somebody told me um that you know how a monkey goes through the trees is they they don't hang on to two vines at the same time. You have to let go of one before you can grab the other. Mm, and yeah, and that's so really that's that's kind of like mm -hmm. you have to first let go of the things you're trying to get rid of and then kind of uh, go without anything for a little while mm -hmm. while you wait for the next vine or yeah, the next opportunity. Suspension. Yeah. yeah, there's this transition point where it doesn't feel so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yesterday, it's crazy. We're, we're coming up. We're talking about all this. But... I saw this quote um, where it was just saying, like, the longer you entertain the things that aren't meant for you, even just time thinking about it, like, you know it's not good for you, but you're still just entertaining that idea. You're, like, stalling what is meant for you. Right. What's meant to be, like, what's coming. Yeah. So That's really good. And it requires courage, faith, belief, you know, that, that it is coming, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people struggle with that. Yeah. So earlier, I forgot what I was going to say, and I just remember. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so it was back when I asked you the question, Dimitra, uh, well, both you guys, of like, what do you think, or why do you think people fill their time and stuff? Oh, right. And the answer that came to me while you guys were talking was resistance. It's, it goes back to resistance. It always does with yeah, art definitely. and with things that, you know, when you're trying, when you are trying to pursue your destiny, resistance it's inevitably will you. come. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, just identifying resistance and overcoming it, like identifying every single obstacle and whether that obstacle is fat that you need to trim or it is clutter that you need to declutter, then just identifying it as resistance mm -hmm. will help you ultimately, you know, get that much closer to pursuing or that much closer. It's like, it's a, it's a constant state of pursuit. Journey, yeah, yeah. It's a journey. So it'll help you stay on the path is what right. I should say. Right. So, all right.
back to the questions because you guys got some good ones. Okay. <laughs> uh, someone said they laughed out loud at my two butts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't only me. <laughs> okay. So Julie Briggs is wondering, what printer do you recommend for printing good quality sources? Oh, That's a good question. There's just so got many. One. Didn't yeah. we just get one? Yeah. I think Epson has really good printers. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, they, you know, they the laser, printers. laser printers. Yeah. Laser or inkjet laser printers. Mm -hmm. um, those Ooh. are good. I, laser printers cost a lot of money. Laser printers are good if you're doing a lot of qual quantity. You know what I mean? I thought that's what we have. We don't have those. No. Oh. Are the big printer is a, no, it's inkjet. I don't know. Honestly. I, it's called an EcoTank, mm -hmm. uh, Inkwell EcoTank, Epson mm -hmm. EcoTank. And so the thing that I love about that for sources, for printing for sources, is the quality is really good. And you can print a ton of sources uh, without having to constantly refill the ink. And so the ink refill, you're going to pay more uh, for the printer than you would otherwise, but you're going to save a lot of money and, and just aggravation in the long run by not having to replace the ink so much. Mm -hmm. So it's an Epson um, EcoTank uh, Inkwell printer. Yeah, if you just look up on Google or Amazon or Ecotank. whatever you want to use, yeah, just Epson EcoTank, then that's... And I think there's like three different models of mm -hmm. them. The um, one we just got was like 250 I think. So yeah. It's not that expensive. It's like 2750 is the model number. It's like ET2750, and then we also have like an ET... 47 years, I don't know, whatever, mm -hmm. um, up at the house and then down here at the studio. So do you print sources on photo paper? Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, just Amazon. I just bought some actually. Mm -hmm. It just makes the colors really bright and crisp. And yeah. Yeah. And you want to invest in your paintings, you know, like it's worth it. The source, especially if you are pretty reliant on a source, then you want to have a good Lately, look and source. <laughs> I've just been using my iPad, you know, as a source, like just having that next to me. Then I don't have to print stuff, but. <laughs> okay, so last question that we'll be taking for this one. Actually, real quick, one more question before that. So, uh, Sheil uh, Donate wants to know, can I take the master program on campus? I'm from India. Mm. So, that is a good question. And the answer is no, unfortunately, because, well, not really unfortunately, because we're no longer offering the on-campus master program. But we are doing a bunch of workshops. We have a whole full, uh, I think, a mm -hmm. year's worth of on-site workshops that we're that doing. Like so through February. Okay, yeah. until February. So there's a bunch of really amazing workshops that you can yeah. attend. And honestly, the um, online mastery program is the most concise version uh, where you get the highest quality. Because it's like it's filmed, edited, multi-angle. You know, if you think about it, you can't get that same experience quite in person. So, right. and it's you guys, you know, really intentionally saying or seeking out to say the right things in the videos and, you know, practicing yeah, for and, it. And, and honestly, like I taught it in person for years and years and we've seen a few years now of online results and the so results are in. It's a lot better. And yeah, and the success rate and uh, how many artists really, you know, do something with it and, and really go far with it is much higher with the online. And I think it's because number one, you can re-access the information. Yep. You can just play it back until you get it. Um, whereas in person, I say it once and you don't even know that you missed it. And, yeah. and well, then there's no replay. And, um, and also I think that people own the information a lot more when they learn online because there isn't anybody there sort of holding their hand. And I think that uh, the on-site, it, it's like people had a lot of, um, you know, I'm the, me and Dimitri were there with them every day. And Putting I, brush strokes down on their paintings. Yeah, it's like, you know, it, like it was too too much. Uh, uh, they bec I think the students became too reliant on us and they didn't own the own, their own information. Mm -hmm. So anyway, because we saw better results, we just don't teach it on-site anymore. Um, and like you said, we do other workshops that are meant more to be like experiences and 
um, you know, intensives and to focus in on sort of one thing um, and and be an intensive. Um, we also have opened up accommodations um, mm -hmm. here on the property um, on campus. And so that's exciting. Starting in September. Yes, yeah, so starting in September. October, we have our first intensive workshop, the abstract the workshop, abstract. and that's a week long. So sh you could come for that and even stay here and yeah. I mean, if it's not full. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, if you're interested in accommodations, you can just um, email uh, customer service. It's not on the website quite yet uh, because we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you it should be it should be any minute now. It'll be up there where you'll actually see the rooms and the price for the room and, you know, mm -hmm. how, how it all works. But. And, and if you want to sign up for the online master program, we are having an open registration in uh, for, I think, one or one and a half weeks um, in the end of August to the beginning of September. So the last few days of August, I think uh, the 20, yeah, the 26th through the first week of September uh, is the only time when you'll be able to sign up for 2021. So yeah. if you're interested in doing that, then I highly recommend you take advantage of this limited time because it's like, you know, it, like we're saying, it's you want to get on the path to your destiny. And so the longer you you spend, you know, entertaining the ideas that aren't for your destiny, then the longer it takes for you to get on that right path. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really excited for you, though. It sounds like you're going to do it. And I can't wait to see the art. We all can't wait to see the art that you create in the program. Um, OK, so the last question now, uh, really good, um, really good question. Let's see, where is it? Um, Sorry, just going to take one second to find this. You guys are commenting a lot, which is great. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, Marike uh, Papama, I am definitely said that wrong. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> wants to know, how do you find the balance to push yourself and not push yourself into burnout? Hmm. That's good. Have you honestly, have you, have you had a burnout? With black uh, sands. A little bit, but on it, it's not like enough to like be like, oh my gosh, I need a break from painting. It's like, but when I don't think I've ever really felt that where like I'm sick of painting and have to stop doing it. Well, the only time you even that I witnessed that you had even close to a burnout was with the publisher, and it was because you weren't painting what you wanted to paint. Yeah. If you were painting what you wanted to paint, even though you were painting a lot, I don't think you would have felt burnt out. So yeah, it's doing thing. You it, feel burned out when you're not doing something that you really love. Yeah. I yeah. Like I get, I get burnt out on, you know, spreadsheets and taxes and administrative, stuff. administrative <laughs> stuff or a problem with a computer and I can't figure it oh, out. That's the worst. Yeah. Uh, th those types of things make me feel burnt out. And, and, um, and so, you know, but that's not my destiny. And I think you the know, longer, like, those are things I just need to hire out and find other people that, you know, that are good at them and enjoy doing them. I, I don't. So I would say evaluate what you spend your time doing. And even in painting, I think artists that get burnt out painting, they're probably not painting in their true style. Um, there might be a shift or a, a, an adjustment in your process that needs to happen so that you don't feel burnt out. Because sometimes I'll get burnt out painting uh, if I start getting too tight and realistic, um, for too long, and then I got to shake things up and get loose for a while. So burn fe the feeling of getting burnt out, I think is a, is a good indicator. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah. If you get burned out, then you know that you're not quite on the right path. Maybe, you know, you think that you are because it's working for something, but even if it's for your art business and you're getting burnt out, maybe that means it's, time to hire someone to do the administrative stuff or, you know, outsource customer service or, you know, those small things, you know, once you get to that point. But as Ellie said before, you know, with that maxim or whatever you want to call it, the um, parable of the monkey swinging between the vines, you know, there might be that time when you're in suspension between the two vines where you might have to, you know, persevere and really push yourself. So, mm -hmm. um, but you'll get through it. <laughs> Well, with that, uh, we're going to conclude this episode of the Light Movement Show. Um, so you guys can come back next week, the same time, uh, Saturday at 12 p.m. EST, and we'll be talking about something 
really fun uh, that we are going to come up with soon. Uh, <laughs> just trying to be honest with you guys. <laughs> well, we love your suggestions too. Yes, so if you yeah. guys have suggestions for, um, you know, uh, any future shows, uh, let us know what it is. Well, we try to do the reason why we don't plan it. Um, it's not cause we're, you know, we don't care, but it's because what we try to do is really feel like what's, what is in the air? What are we mm -hmm. all sort of collectively experiencing? And we, uh, we, we sort of come up with it, you know, just basically a few days before, because we're trying to be really, really relevant and, um, timely about, you know, maybe even prophetic, I don't know, but like something we're, we're doing our best to try to feel intuitively what we're supposed to talk about. Yeah. So we love your suggestions and, um, we're definitely open. So, mm -hmm. and if you're new to the channel, uh, make sure you like, and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it. Um, and you know, tune in to our next episode, um, check out some of our old stuff. Uh, it's, there's lots of, lots of, podcasts just like this um, on our channel. So thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you guys next week. Okay.